Hello, nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in Nerd Dump Gaming Edition for the week of August 27th, 2018. This week in gaming, we have booze to talk about. That's right, alcoholic adult beverages. Uh, Fortnite has things, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and some other stuff. So let's hit up the intro. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commando War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me and talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. Yeah. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Yes, you heard me right. We are talking Fallout this week in video games, but, or, nope, that's not how I did the intro. Yes, that's right. We are talking about booze this week in video games, or in, in gaming. It's not video games if it's booze, but there's gaming, and it's Fallout booze. Again! This time it's not beer, though. Last time we got, uh, the, the guys at Bethesda teamed up with a beer company to do a unique brew, uh, Nuka something. Uh, for, I believe it was for Fallout New Vegas. Now, for the release of 76, we're getting Nuka Dark, which is a rum. Yes. You can turn Fallout into a drinking game with Fallout booze. I, I just, that's just cool. I just, I now I have to go buy a bottle just so I can have a bottle. Then it'll go with my Mortal Kombat beer, right? Yeah, there you go. Uh, but that, that's, that's all we got for the booze and slash Fallout stuff. I mean, there are a bunch of really epic, uh, mods that are about to hit. We've got Fallout 4 New Vegas, Fallout California, Fallout Miami, or just to name a few. Those are probably the biggest ones, though. We're not talking about those because there's nothing really new to talk about yet. I feel like they're all right about to be released. So when that happens, we'll definitely talk about them. But in the meantime, we're moving on to Fortnite. Uh, so we are about to get season, I believe it's season six. I, I, I did, I could be wrong. So please don't hang me if it's season five, but I'm pretty sure it's season six. Uh, because words and numbers are a thing that just kind of get lost up in here. Anyway, so with the, uh, new season coming on the horizon, Data miners are in full force, as per usual, trying to find out clues as to what new things we're getting in the new season. Uh, we've that obviously uh, they have announced the official announcements have been purely cosmetic, so we've got new outfits, new uh, new pickaxe, and so on and so forth. But the actual data miners, the ones that are looking for the leaks, have found a couple of really interesting weapons we might be getting uh, from a couple of really reliable data miners, guys who have kind of let let the cat out of the bag early previously. Uh, first, we are getting a quad launcher. So I'm imagining that's a rocket launcher that launches four rockets at once. Uh, then we are also getting a flamethrower. And those two are probably the two with the, the lowest probability. Not that it's all that low, but in, the, in terms of probability, because none of this has officially been announced yet, uh, those two, there's no accompanying artwork. But we also got a shockwave grenade has been found, and th there has been artwork made known. So that one is almost as good as confirmed. The other two are just below that level, just because it's pretty... It's a pretty easy process, I feel like, for the data miners at this point, because they know what they're looking for, because again, we're five, six seasons deep, they they kind of know what the early packages bring. So every time you you uh, start Fortnite, it does little minor updates when it, when it uh, I mean, probably not every time, but every so often it'll do minor updates and leading up to a new season, leading up to a big announcement, those minor updates become more frequent and they are planting small bits of code and then once the the big announcement happens or the new season starts or whatever then that big update kind of just links all of these strains of code so that whatever the uh, uh the release is you can then use it 
So what the data miners do is they go find the little strings of code before they're all linked together and kind of piece together what the text in those codes could be referring to because they do use names of weapons and names of objects in the actual code itself. That's how we got quad uh, quad launcher, flamethrower, and shockwave grenade. And actually, if you remember, we talked about this for season four, I believe, with the return of the rocket launchers, or not the rocket launcher, I'm sorry, the jetpack. So I that's really interesting. Not going to make me want to play uh, Fortnite all that much more, but it'll make it a lot more interesting to watch. Fortnite's just not a game for me. I feel like watching it is a lot more enjoyable uh, than playing it would be. From where I'm sitting right now, anyway. Uh, to prove me wrong, I know I'm going to get hate for that. But <laughs> I'm a Halo guy. I'm sorry. I'm an FPS all the way. And we're moving on. Next up, we are talking about Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Really interesting update on this. Uh, the newest Assassin's Creed, when it launches, they're shooting for this to be a full-blown RPG. Uh, they're, they're, they have everything all the way down to multiple dialogue trees and then you can you can your ability trees and just it sounds like they're also going to have a legitimate changing ending so depending on how you complete the game will determine how the game ends uh instead of just getting a, a you know you have all of these things you can do and then they all converge into one ending uh, I know this has been kind of a source of contention for long-term fans of the game um, because it showed signs that it might be heading this direction in previous games and just never quite got there. I mean, elements of RPG have been in there, but it hasn't been full-fledged RPG, just a, an action-adventure with RPG elements. Now, it sounds like they're going for full-on RPG with Odyssey. Um, this could be one of the things that they need in order to breathe new life into this series. Not that Assassin's Creed is really hurting necessarily, though they they have seen decline in sales over the last uh, three games, I believe. So, I'm yeah, it, we'll keep you posted because that's that's kind of cool. I <laughs> I dig I dig RPG elements in things like even in my fighting games, Mortal Kombat, uh, Injustice, so on and so forth. But I feel like if you have an action adventure game with any sort of depth, then if it becomes a franchise, the fans are immediately going to start to start crying for a proper RPG. I, this is the smartest choice that they could have made and and that's all we got so we're kicking on to our last bit of news and this is something that the internet is totally abuzz with right now odd job in goldeneye yes that's right for those of you that don't know it has been officially declared by the goldeneye developers specifically mark edmonds who was the chief programmer on the project back in the days of the nintendo 64 uh, he said in an interview that Odd Job, because of Odd Job's height, that he is obviously cheating. Like, like <laughs> it was strange to him almost that people didn't know this already. Uh, Odd Job, for those of you that don't know, Odd Job is suspiciously small when it comes to the rest of the characters in that game. Though I feel like if you put it on DK mode, the big heads, long arms, if you put it on uh, Donkey Kong mode. Uh, that fixes the problem, and I rarely play it without that mode set, so I, I didn't really know this was a thing necessarily, because we always played with Donkey Kong mode. Um, but yeah, so Odd Job is officially cheating. There have been, so for those of you that are playing, I, I believe they released uh, on the Switch. There's a retro game version of it for the Switch, or it might have been the Wii U. I'm, it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the Wii U, not the Switch, because the Switch doesn't have a virtual console yet. But uh, the the retro version on the internets, uh, if you're playing that, then and your little baby brother wants to play, then let him play Odd Job because it's cheating anyway, and nobody cares. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, uh, just. Again, this was kind of news to me because I rarely played it without the big head mode, at the very least big head mode, uh, if not big heads and the long arms, aka Donkey Kong mode. So, yeah, there you go. Stop cheating, jerks. But that's where we're ending this week's gaming episode, guys. I know it was a real quick one. Last week's was a lot more intense uh, and I feel like better done, but they can't all be winners. 
Thank you for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down below. If, though, you want to go deeper in the conversation with me, then jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is where you can find all of the things. Social media, free stuff, uh, the, the nerdy store so you can get nerdy swag. All of that is over on generallynerdy.net. Or if you want to support the channel more directly, there is a Patreon, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. Everybody knows how that works. Four tiers. Go check it out. Patreon.com slash Generally Nerdy. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you're falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, before we click boxes and visit websites, guys, always, always remember that if it is generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>